Howdy, Jake. How you doing, sir? Uh, not bad, Cliff. Uh, uh, how about you, sir? Doing pretty well. A little, little chilly down here in Houston. I'm not used to it. You guys up there in Ohio, it's no big deal for y'all. Down here, we aren't used to a little, little cold weather here or there. <laughs> But now nah, do, doing pretty well. Glad to be glad to be done with another week. Have it on a Friday. Right on. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. I always want to check that. I, I've been having issues with my audio every once in a while on some of these recaps, and it drives me crazy when I don't have my mic set up just right. But good. Okay. Well. I'm good for however you want to do this thing, Jake. You are in charge of this of the show. <laughs> oh man, we're both in trouble. No, um, <laughs> <laughs> um well, okay. Uh, um, first of all, I, I, I would like to say thank you so much for for uh, 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 agreeing to, to. Geez, thank you for doing this, Cliff. I I, I appreciate it and. It it is my absolute pleasure pleasure. Hey, you, you you've been such a supporter, Jake. You're a true friend, and uh, I am happy to come on here and get a chance to talk to you a little bit one on one instead of me just rambling on and on like I tend to do on some of my shows. So uh, thank you, I appreciate it. Well, I I I I, I do not mind at all uh, uh, listening to you ramble because there's some people that I I'd rather not care to talk to, but you I I don't mind, so it's cool. Mm. Thank you, sir. Excuse me, I stutter and sometimes I get nervous. So I'm a little excited. Though. Yeah, no worries at all. You know, it's funny. I was super shy as a kid. I mean, I it was the one that would sit back there. I couldn't stand to talk, raise my hand, anything. Uh, so for me to actually go on Big Brother was such a huge change in the way I, from when I was a kid to when I got older and everything else. It was a, uh, and, and I still feel like I'm kind of a, uh, a quiet individual type person. Uh, but it's almost like when I was in that house, it was a little bit of a job uh, just to go in there and do all that talking and everything else. But uh, I remember times thinking, God, just get me out of here. Let me just be my myself for a little while. I'm so tired of talking uh, on and on and on all day long. I'm watching this season and seeing how they're kind of stressed out and starting to just want to go off into their own rooms and hang out for a little bit. And I get it completely. All right. Stop that. Well, um, I, I guess I'll start off with the first question. Uh, what's your favorite restaurant to go out to eat at? Oh man, you're you're hitting me with a hard one. We uh, we're lucky down here in Houston because we're we're close to the coast. We've got a pretty diverse uh culture down here so we've got so many different restaurants and i've traveled all over the world so uh, i've eaten a lot of a lot of exotic foods and everything else uh, i tell you what if if it's just kind of a a comfort food just to just to get out and enjoy something I, you can't go wrong with chilies I, I i like me some uh some baby back ribs or an old timer burger something like that i'm a i'm a pretty basic guy pretty simple guy so i love that uh, certainly, we got a lot of Mexican food down here in Houston, but one of my specialties, I really like like Thai food. I, I, I like it super spicy. Whatever I eat, I like the spicy stuff. So uh, I always enjoyed eating at Thai restaurants here and there uh, and Vietnamese restaurants as well. But I think chilies, I, I'll, I'll eat chilies every every day and night. That's probably a boring answer, but uh, oh. uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy whenever I walk into a chilies. Good choice. Uh, what about yours? You have you have a favorite? Oh geez. <laughs> yeah, it's a um a a a Chin a a Ch Chinese buffet. Uh, um, it's called a uh, oh my God. <laughs> hometown buffet. And and oh, okay. Oh yeah, it's uh, very good. Yeah, those buffets are dangerous. You get in there and just eat and eat and eat. I, uh, uh, I have my my voluptuous form uh, just because I spent so much time in Chinese buffet restaurants. <laughs> same here, sir. <laughs> I, I got the same form, so it's all good. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> all right. Um, what do 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 you let like to do for fun? 
Any 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 hobbies? Yeah, I right now it seems like it's just watching TV all the time with Big Brother on and all of that. Uh, we watch a lot of reality TV, but uh, now that uh, we're a little older, it's it's just my wife and I here. Our kids are out of the house and everything, so we've got a little bit more free time. Uh, you know what I really like to do is just anything outdoors. Uh, if here at the house, I grow some stuff in the backyard. I grow some grapes and some avocados. And uh, I just got a pear tree and a peach tree that I'm going to grow next spring or, or plant and everything. So I'm kind of a gardener at the end of the day, I think, to, to do a lot of that kind of stuff. I also like doing a little woodworking. Uh, I don't know if I'm great at it, but uh, yeah, I like getting power tools out and uh, what's that all? Uh, home improvement, Tim Allen. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Roo, roo, roo. I, I feel like that sometimes. Uh, I'm always worried I'm going to cut something off that I don't need to be cutting off. But uh, yeah, I like working just outside doing, doing different tasks and all that. But we also try to get away as much as possible. Uh, I love just going to the lake and hanging out and sitting on a pier and fishing or getting in a kayak and just kind of enjoying the quiet and the solitude and, and just getting away from the cell phone and, and TV and everything else. So uh, I, I'm an outdoor kind of guy, whether it's just relaxing or doing a little work, either one. I like doing both of them. Right on. Man. Uh, okay. Um, have you ever seen the 2004 Dawn of the Dead remake, and if you did, uh, what do you think? Uh, Zack Snyder, 2004, yeah. shopping mall up in uh, Canada that was torn down right after they filmed it. Oh, you know me, Jake. I'm a huge Dawn of the Dead fan now. I'm always going to gravitate towards George Romero and and his uh, his his dead movies more so than the remakes. Uh, I, I've got to say, I really enjoyed the first ten minutes of the remake. Uh, with with Zack Snyder, uh, it, it was it was an intense first ten minutes when the thing first hits, and I I don't want to do any spoilers or anything, but uh, I thought the movie started off great. Once they got to the shopping mall, I wasn't quite as as big a fan. I've always been a fan of the slow moving zombies as opposed to the fast ones and and all of that. But uh, you know, at the end of the day. I enjoyed a lot of it. I forgot the guy's name that was in in Modern Family, uh, um, who was in it, who was kind of the villain sort of of, of the group and all that. And uh, I liked it. It was entertaining. Again, I, I'm always going to go back to the original uh, in terms of preferences and everything else. But I, I thought a little more action packed, a little faster paced than the the original one. So I see why a lot of people like it as well. Oh yeah, and uh, I like. I, there's one part there's a, a gun shop that's not located in the mall like the original it's actually located just a couple of hundred feet away but there's about a hundred thousand zombies between one and the other and so uh, uh it, it was fun seeing them try to deal with wanting to get all those guns and it's just not quite where you can get to it and trying to figure out how they're going to make it happen and stuff absolutely what about you do you have a preference one or the other um I, I, I like them both, but probably George George A. The uh, George's version. It, it's a yeah, copy. Romero's. Yeah, yeah. I I like that if for no other reason. I like that version because yeah, the whole thing's in a shopping mall that's been taken over. Or yeah, the the world's falling apart. The first time I saw Dawn of the Dead was at a midnight movie in a shopping mall. And so when the movie was over at 2.30 or something in the morning, all the lights were turned off in the mall. There was a security guard that had to lead us to the exit with a flashlight. And so I'd just seen this movie about a shopping mall with zombies everywhere. And then suddenly I'm going through this dark mall and it was easy to put myself in place of, of what happened in the movie. And then you get outside and there's no cars and, and everything else. So it just hit home. It scared the heck out of me just because of the way I saw that movie when I saw it right on also the um a a actor from uh uh modern family is ty uh uh burrell thank you i couldn't remember his name i uh it's so funny because i it's been a while since i've seen the remake uh and then i've watched modern family and i know i spent a lot of time saying where do i recognize that guy from and then suddenly it rang a bell uh and uh yeah I, he played a great role in that movie it was a lot of fun yeah he did <laughs> 
Okay. okay. Since I, I know you like George Strait, um, what are your top five favorite George Strait songs? Uh, you get me there. Uh, you know what? Uh, probably my favorite is uh, Troubadour. And I talked about that while I was in the Big Brother house. It's not maybe his biggest hit. It's not as old as some of some of his others. But it's all about him feeling getting old and yet knowing that inside he still feels young and that the mirror doesn't really show who I am inside and the wrinkles don't mean who, you know, what I am and all that. And I listened to that right before, a little bit before I went into the big brother house and just fell in love with it because I felt like while I was playing that game, I was the same way. Yeah. I'm older than everyone else in there, but that doesn't really represent who I am and the way I was trying to play. So that song has a lot of personal meaning to me. Uh, I love the movie P Pure Country that George Strait was in. So there, there's several on there that I really like. Uh, Heartland uh, is one of them. Uh, what else? There's a, uh, uh, um, I, I like some of his cl his, his classics. Uh, uh, wrapped around, uh, uh, unwound. Uh, the, the, my favorite is Game Unwound. Uh, you've got to have an ace in the hole. Uh, they call me the fireman, or the fireman. I guess is the song on it. Uh, I like. I like some of his faster paced songs. I mean, I like some of his songs where he tells messages and all that, but I like some of the, the faster songs as well, uh, where it's kind of kind of boot scooting, dancing kind of music that uh, uh, that just kind of gets you fired up and all of that. Uh, I play a lot of games. Uh, 42 is a big domino game here in Texas that I played while I was in school and all that. And uh, there's just something about a special by a George Strait song that just puts you in the mood for country music and country uh, country everything. Right on. So are you a George Strait fan? Yes, I am. Oh, good. Oh, see, all the way up in Ohio. I know country music isn't quite as big up there, but uh, I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> oh, yeah. He... <laughs> okay. Um. <sighs> Excuse me. What's your favorite competition that... <laughs> You, you 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 competed on in 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 on Big Brother Twenty One. <laughs> you know, it kind of depends on how you you define that. I, I was very happy that I got to compete in the OTEV competition, just because it's such an iconic. You know, everyone talks about OTEV and all that, and so I was really happy I got to do it, even though I didn't do that well. I, I only made it to the second round and all, uh, but I was really happy to do it. You know what I liked. Really, in terms of competitions, it, well, first of all, I really like the competition rolling the ball uh, down, a, down a little snake ramp uh, because, one, I was very good at it, uh, really good at it, and, and, two, it saved me. It saved my rear end. If I hadn't done well on that, I would have been out of the house. So that's always going to be my favorite uh, competition. I I don't necessarily like the competitions that are so physical, and maybe it's just because it's who I am, and I knew there were people I couldn't compete against. Uh, I like the competition where I feel like everyone kind of have has an equal shot, regardless of who you are, uh, that, that you you have a chance to win it. And so uh, I certainly like rolling the balls. I know the very first day I was in the uh, the house, uh, they tried to banish me and they sent me into the pitch black maze and I had to find my way out. And I enjoyed that only because once I was banished, I was so nervous. I thought, oh, everything I've done to try to get into this house, and now they're going to send me out on day number one if I don't win a competition. This is just horrible. And yet when they brought me in and they said, this is going to be a pitch black maze that you have to find your way through, I was like, yeah, I got this one. I I love doing mazes. Anytime you go to one of these fairs or whatever that has the the mazes, I I usually try to do it and see how fast I can do it. And I actually had strategies about how I was going to make it through the maze and not duplicate where I was going and all that. So uh, I enjoyed that. But with all that being said, Jake, one of the ones I enjoyed the most, just because it was a fun challenge, was the veto competition uh, the week that I was HOH. And it was a competition where you had to go out and sit on a jet ski wearing all these clothes and you had to push a button. And they've done it. I think season 20 did it as well. They've done it a few times. I think season 23 did it also. Uh, you have to push two buttons on your uh, on your hand handles and one on the floor, if I recall. So pushing three buttons while taking your clothes off down to your swimsuit. If you let go of a button, it speeds up the time a lot. And it was just fun because I didn't win, but I did pretty well. 
Uh, I, I actually was a lot more flexible than I thought. And it was such a challenge of figuring out how are you going to keep all these buttons pushed while you're taking your clothes off and, and getting undressed and still make a good time and all of that. And I enjoyed it just because it seems so typical of what a, a Big Brother competition could be. It's it's something that anyone potentially could do, and yet it doesn't take itself too seriously. It's just kind of a silly, dumb competition, watching someone trying to take their clothes off while they're sitting on a jet ski. It's typical Big Brother type stuff. And I remember after I got done, I thought, God, I don't know if I won or not, but I'm sure I didn't come in last place. And sure enough, I think I came in like third place or so. So I, I did all right with it. But I, I really enjoyed the competition just because it was something that was certainly not something I've ever done a whole lot of before. So, uh, yeah, that was a cool one as well. Awesome. Right on. And um, I think I think think they they started that in season season 18 with the uh rv and yeah you're right yeah i remember that now that you mention it i yeah i because <laughs> i've watched these shows for a long time and i remember watching that it sure never dawned on me that i would actually be doing that competition just a couple of years later a few years later yeah i'm watching the show which is oh that's really neat that's the, how would i do it and all of that well then i got the chance to do it a little bit later it, it was so cool being a fan watching that show for so many seasons and then actually getting to go in the house and, and live everything and actually experience it myself. It was a, a definitely a bucket list dream item kind of thing to, to get to do. Nice. And I, I, I still think you should have won. Um, I don't know. You know, I tried Jake, I gave it, I wasn't going to quit. I was going to give it everything I had. And uh, it, it it just didn't work out. I told, I think I told Julie during my exit interview, I know I mentioned in a diary room session or two towards the end. I said, I really feel like I'm about one competition away. If I can just win one of these last three or four competitions, I feel like I'm going to be okay. And it just didn't happen. I've competing against old Jackson. Mickey was such a, a comp beast and all that. And I just, I just came up just a little bit short uh, it would have been fun to get a little bit further. I, I was ready to go with a final two speech. I felt like I could probably out talk anyone else who was in there and convince the jury to to vote me in. And it killed me after I was evicted because we had to go to the round table where we all talk about the final three and all that. And when I got there, I started talking to all the jury and realized how many people, if I'd made it to the final two, how many people would have given me their vote to win it? I, I really think if I'd made it there, I would have, would have gotten the whole thing so yeah just that close but you know such is life yeah you don't always always win it was it was more about the battle i gave and never giving up and trying to serve as a proper role model for for just fighting and, and giving everything giving 100 percent anytime you have the opportunity absolutely also something else you 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 prove that um Guys who have a uh 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 voluptuous figure can twerk. <laughs> oh well, I'm not sure I, I prove that. <laughs> I'm just um <laughs> I, I prove that guys with our kind of figures can try to twerk. <laughs> uh they told me that. I Jake, I was trying so hard. I, I wanted to do everything possible to fit in with all the, the 20 somethings that were in that house. And so when they said, oh, we want to dress you up in a fashion show, it's like, yeah, bring it on. I'll act as silly as possible. I don't care. When they wanted me to do the flash mob dancing, sure, I'll, I have no rhythm, but I'll I'll do it anyway. There was nothing that they, well, very few things that they wanted to do that that I was going to decline. Now, I, I walked away every time they started popping pimples on each other's backs and things like that. I, everyone's got to draw a line somewhere, and I didn't want to have anything to do with that, but yeah, when they said that the uh, the competition tiebreaker was twerking, I thought, yeah, that that's where I probably ought to step out. But I've never turned down the challenge. I just quickly discovered that my body doesn't move that way. I just don't have, I don't know, I guess my joints are fused somewhere or the muscles just aren't there. Because if it was a HOH or veto competition, I would have been the first one out of the twerking part of a of a veto competition. But I tried it. I and I I feel like I probably provided a bit of a comedy to everyone who was watching me try to twerk. Except for my kids. I'm not sure they were laughing. They were probably cringing the whole time. <laughs> yeah, but you know, 
It is what it is. Yeah. It's Big Brother. Uh, you 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 don't go in thinking that you aren't going to act silly and and be a little goofy at times. I did spend a lot of time while I was in that house because we don't know how we're being portrayed on the show. Yeah, and and. I thought, God, they're they're just gonna make me look like the goofiest old guy in there doing all this stuff and trying to fit in. And I could just picture the circus music playing in the background every time they showed me walking around or you know, just always being the the goofball in the house. But whatever. I, I was just gonna try to be who I was in there. Right on. Okay, um what are your top five uh, scary movies, if you uh, have that many? Yeah, I know I can give you a few. Now, I know I'm talking to the expert here, so uh, uh, I'll have to think about it for a second. Uh, and and it depends. There's the classics and then some of the new ones and all of that. Uh, I'll put Dawn of the Dead right up there any day of the week. Uh, that's my go-to scary movie. As a kid, the one that scared the heck out of me was uh, Psycho. Uh, cause, cause I was younger and back then it was, you know, a little before Halloween and Friday the 13th. We didn't have as much back then. Uh, and so I saw that and, uh, I remember just being terrified and now you watch it, It's like, well, that's good, but it's maybe not, you know, that crazy, but, uh, but that terror terrified me. Uh, so I'll, I'll throw that in there a little bit more modern ones. Uh, you know, one that really got my attention was paranormal activity. I know it wasn't huge budget it was it was a low budget who was a bloom house i think is who does that one if i recall uh but i watched that hearing that it was great but not really knowing anything about it uh and i remember my wife and i watched it and just got creeped out i guess the whole idea of of ghost in your house and everything just uh, uh just gave me the, the shiver so so I, i'll throw that one in there i'll also throw in the ring uh which i, th I thought was a fantastic horror movie uh Dude, that that got my attention and then you got to go with the classic i and i'll probably go with halloween before friday the 13th uh i i love the original halloween with donald pleasance and uh just uh that creepy creepy music that plays every time uh you know, every time anything's getting ready to happen and all of that so uh uh yeah i, I i'll go with those so i got a little bit of a mix of the old all the way up to the uh uh, to, to a little bit newer. Uh, yeah, I, I like the ones that create a little stress and, and drama and, and all that. I'm not as big into the ones that are super explicit in, oh, in terms oh. of some of the scenery and the gore. Of course, saying that, and then I, I talk about Donna the Dead being my all-time favorite, and that was certainly gory. But uh, yeah, I like the ones that just have you kind of kind of tensing up and you realize all of a sudden that, uh, that the slightest knock outside or something has is, is got you scared. And yeah, those, those are the ones I remember. And things like Halloween, I'll always remember that because it was my brother and I watching it alone uh, at night in a house. And well, I was like 13 years old at the time. And so it kind of, kind of struck home. I remember when that movie was over, neither one of us wanted, we had to go somewhere. Neither one of us wanted to walk through the garage because it was dark and it was like, hey, yeah, no, I'm just going to sit here on the couch where it's safe because of because of everything we'd seen. So yeah, I, I'll, I'll certainly throw Halloween in there. So you, I know you got to have about 101 favorites, but can you narrow it down to top one or two? Yeah. Um... <laughs> Uh, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with uh, Night of of the Demons. It's from uh, 1988, and uh, geez, possibly uh, Jeepers Creepers. A... I've seen Jeepers Creepers. Yeah, that was pretty good. I don't think I've seen Night of the Demons for some reason. I remember seeing the poster. I'm pretty sure, but I don't know if I've actually seen it. So I I'll put it on the list and I'll let you know what I think. Okay, it it's not for everyone. That... <laughs> So, but so so don't hate me if you don't if you watch it and it's like, whoa, is this too crazy or something? <laughs> no, I'm. It's funny. Uh, why do people like horror movies so much? It's really interesting that we like uh, uh, like watch out. We like getting scared, and then you have some that are a little bit more uh, a little bit of comedy element that are thrown in as, as well, and and those are always always fun. But when I think of horror movies, I think of the ones that just make me nervous to be walking outside so uh, uh 
Yeah, there's a bunch of fun ones out there. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, um, 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 this question, I'm, I, I've I, 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 I always, I, always been uh, curious. <laughs> it's, it's actually a serious question, but um, did they have good toilet paper in the, in the Big Brother house? <laughs> That's a great question. I'll tell you this, Jake. I don't think I've been asked that before. Um, I guess it was good because I don't remember being upset with it. I So, you know, I feel like toilet paper, it's either uh, toilet paper, maybe it's a little bit like wine. I, I'm not a connoisseur. I can't tell you what's really great versus okay, but I can tell you probably what's bad. And so <laughs> toilet paper is the same way. I, uh, I don't remember having issues with it. I, I was so... I, I couldn't worry about the toilet paper because I was so much more worried about just the whole idea of using a bathroom while there's all these people sitting on couches right outside talking away and everything else. It was, it was such a weird experience. And that door didn't even lock in that bathroom because they'd had a couple of years before someone, I can't remember what her name was, it had passed out in the bathroom and so in the toilet stall. So there was no way you could lock it. All you could do was turn a switch that said occupied versus busy or occupied versus vacant. Uh, but I was never really certain if that, if people paid attention to that or not. And uh, yeah, I, I didn't necessarily, I didn't care if someone walked in on me, but I ne didn't necessarily want the cameras pointing in while they were walking in on me. That could have been a little, uh, that certainly would have made a meme that would have lived on for, for generations. I'm sure. Uh, but yeah, I don't, re I don't remember. It was, uh, uh, I, I remember there was a whole roll, a whole stack of them, a little holder on the side and, uh, you know, 16 people going to the bathroom. You go through a lot of toilet paper in that house. It seems like, <laughs> yeah, that was weird. A lot of people tell me that that would be their toughest adjustment. Uh, it's just having just that one toilet. Now you have one upstairs sometimes, and a lot of people use that as well. And, and I did also. I didn't mind using the upstairs bathroom, but there was a shower upstairs. And I told myself, I'm not using that shower until I've earned the right to use that shower. So for the first four weeks, I showered downstairs. I didn't care who else was in the, the bathroom at the time. Now, I usually got up early in the morning. So lots of times I would shower just as people were waking up. So it wasn't quite as crowded. But uh, but I would always shower downstairs until I won that HOH on day number 30. And once that happened, I said, all right, now I'm in the big leagues. Now I've earned the right. I remember going up there and just getting underneath the, the steam of that shower. And God, I feel like I took about a 45 minute shower and just enjoyed the fact that I was back in the house, that I was in control, that I actually had done something in the house. It was it, it was one of the more enjoyable showers I've ever had in my life was when I got to use that HOH shower. <laughs> right on. <laughs> so, um, you you uh um I I I was I was going excuse me I I was going going to ask if you preferred fast zombies or slow zombies but you kind of answered that so. always always the slow zombies I and maybe that I yeah I'm sure that makes me old school but I just like the idea I like the idea of the zombies that if there's a, just like in the original Dawn of the Dead where they tell uh. They tell Flyboy, they say that they're they're going slow. You can run around them. Don't go back that way. You can run past them. And the whole idea that if it's one zombie, if it's five zombies, if it's 10 zombies, you can probably handle that because they, they don't move fast. It's when they all get together and suddenly your back's against the wall and you realize that you have nowhere to go and they're all coming in on you. That's when, I guess it's just that, that stifling uh, enveloping of, of them just coming in on you that they're not fast they're they're not rushing there's there's no reason you shouldn't be able to beat them until there's like a hundred of them and then what do you do and so yeah i just feel like it brings up the drama a little bit more when you watch the the old school zombie shows where they may be on the other side of the room and they're coming slow and you said uh, that the beat the you know bump 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 and they just slowly are coming closer and your mind's racing a little bit like in a big brother house your mind just starts racing what I'm, what am i gonna do what am i gonna do and uh, it, it's not fast reactions. It's just looking around and figuring out what your options are. So yeah, I'm always, always going to be into the slow zombies, uh, much more than the fast ones. Right on. <laughs> uh. 
I don't know. I'm glad you're asking the horror movie questions, Jake, because that's a departure that I don't normally uh, normally get asked. That's always always a lot of fun talking about uh, about those things. I don't I don't know how many times I've seen that original Dawn of the Dead. Of course, when I saw it originally, uh, it was you didn't have streaming services. There was no Netflix or anything else around. It was uh, I saw it at the movie theaters. Then it went quite a while before I saw it again until finally it came out on a old VCR tape. Uh, and, and I, I had that and watched it over and over again. And then eventually I bought it on DVD, a special four pack that had the making of and extras and scenes and, and things like that. And, uh, I actually saw Dawn of the Dead before I saw Night of the Living Dead, which was the original 1968, uh, that kind of made Romero famous and, and all of that. Uh, but I didn't, wasn't even able to find that until several years, uh, after I saw the original and, uh, it was good, but but I always I I'll always like the shopping mall one because I can just relate to it more. Very cool, very cool. Um, um so. <laughs> Here's a question. Uh, um, what do you think about uh, what are your favorite pizza toppings? I'm gonna get in trouble for this one. You know, I got dry. I didn't realize at the time, but people called me out for eating pizza while drinking milk while I played Big Brother. It's like, why not? There's cheese on the pizza. It seems like having dairy on as your as your uh, drink is fine. But I had a lot of people that responded to me after I got out. They said, "You, you don't drink." cheese with pizza that's weird it's like i don't know i I never thought anything about it but uh uh my favorite toppings uh i like um uh i i like thick crust uh yeah and i like just piled on with a bunch of cheese and all of that but probably my two favorite toppings are either the hawaiian pizza the the pineapple and the bacon or the canadian ham and that's where people get upset. They, I guess whether or not pineapple belongs on pizza is a huge controversy. Uh, but I, I really like that. And the other thing I like is I'll get like pepperonis uh, and banana peppers. So use, uh, and sometimes jalapenos, uh, either jalapenos or banana peppers, just to give it a little bit of a, a spice, a little bit of a zing. And then the pepperonis, just because I love me some pepperonis. So lots of times when I'll order a pizza, I'll get half with the the uh, the jalapenos and the pepperonis, and half with the uh, uh, the the Canadian bacon and the uh, and the pineapple on it. And that way, I can kind of get the best of both worlds. Awesome. So, so what are, what are yours? Are you are you pro pineapple or anti pineapple on pizza? <laughs> I am very pro pineapple. There you go. All right, Jake. I knew we thought alike. <laughs> And sausages, so, and, and uh, mushrooms. Mm. Oh yeah, I, I yeah, I, I'm I have no problem with mushrooms. You know, sometimes I'll get it with uh, like mushrooms. Sometimes I'll get a uh, oh, I can't even think of it now. A uh, 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 like a cheesesteak version. Uh, I'll get mushrooms and and some some beef on there, and and try to make almost like a uh, uh like a cheesesteak on my pizza. Uh, I hated mushrooms as a kid. And then suddenly I just ate them. I was probably in some foreign country. That's all I had to eat or something. And and now I love them. I, I'll, I'll eat them all the time. I don't remember that we ever had them inside the Big Brother house. Yeah, it's funny because when you're in the house, they don't ask you what you want. They just put food in there and you just figure out what you can, uh, what you can survive on. And so I, I don't remember a whole lot of mushrooms. We didn't have a cook like Felicia either during my season. We just kind of made do with with whatever was going on. These guys seem like they've eaten pretty well having uh, Felicia in there and cooking up all their meals for them and all that. Definitely. <laughs> okay. Um, how do you feel about uh, cheesecake? <laughs> it's dangerous because I because I'll eat way too much of it. You you too? Thank God. Yeah. I thought it was the only one. <laughs> no, I love there are very few desserts that I don't enjoy. I like all God, there's I like all kinds of cheese. Uh cheese uh cake, uh 
chocolate pie. You're making me hungry just think about it. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I like cheesesteak. Uh, I keep saying cheesesteak. Now I'm thinking about cheesesteaks in the back of my head. I too close to dinner time. But uh, yeah, I, I like cheesecake. I like it. I'm a huge, I love strawberries ever since I was a little kid. And maybe that's why I like to garden as well, because my grandparents uh, had a huge strawberry garden and it was my job to go out and make sure the snails weren't out there. So I'd go out and pick all the snails off and all of that. But in exchange, I, I remember just eating as many strawberries as I wanted for, for a few months at a time. So I love me some strawberries. Uh, and, and I absolutely love having some uh, cheesecake with a big old strawberry topping on the top of it. And uh, yeah, I I have to be careful with those because you put a whole pie pan of cheesecake in front of me, I'll probably eat the whole the whole thing. So <laughs> I have to make sure I just have one tiny slice in front of me and then put the rest of it away because I don't know if I have the discipline to avoid. Yeah. You're talking my language, Jake. I love to, I love all the desserts, but I especially love cheesecake. <laughs> oh, same here. Man. It's just and and being diabetic, that's not something that's not good. But you know, well, and yeah, yeah, I, and I try to be better. Yeah, it was funny when I was inside the Big Brother house. I actually lost weight, even though when I'm sitting there, there's nothing to do. It's not like you do a lot of exercising or running or anything else. Uh, but just not having access to as much fast food, you know, no access to fast food, just being in there and eating and I maybe the stress and everything else. I actually did pretty well while I was in there and then COVID hit. And so I spent a whole year without going fast food and everything else. But uh, then once that was over, yeah, I have to be careful. I just recently cut out Cokes and soft drinks and all of that. I, I'm trying to avoid as much sugar as I can just because I know it's not good for your system. And uh, so... Yeah, cheesecake has to be a very infrequent guilty pleasure, I guess, at this point in time. <laughs> right on. <laughs> I I should sh I I excuse me. I I should 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 uh, um 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 cut out uh um pop. It's just uh diet Pepsi is just hard to hard habit to kick i know oh it, it kills me i i love it I, and i don't know if it's the best approach or not but the way i get around it is i try to drink water but uh, i also am drinking a whole lot more coffee than i used to and when i was inside the big brother house that was my deal every morning i would get up and try to get a cup of coffee and, and drink a cup or two before anyone else was up and that was my quiet time uh, and, and now that I've tried to cut out the soft drinks, I've spent all morning long drinking coffee instead. So less sugar in my system, but I walk around like this all the time with the jitters from all all the uh, uh, all uh, the coffee that I that I drink. So speaking of coffee, um, how, how, how do you? Take your coffee. I just drink it straight up black. I'm a simple guy. Uh, when I I started drinking coffee when I was working out in the oil field uh, because out there it, it wasn't uncommon for me to work 36 hours straight working on a drilling rig. And sometimes it's just the way it works. You're out in the middle of nowhere. There's no one to relieve you. And so I was working some pretty hard days while I was out there. And there was always coffee available uh, on the rig. So I started drinking it just really just to keep me awake as much as anything else while I was doing that kind of work. But I know when I first drank it, I put a little cream in it. I'd put a, uh, uh, put a little sugar in it as well. So I kind of had it all bulked up with other stuff because I, I wasn't necessarily a fan of the taste. I just needed the caffeine. Uh, but then when I started traveling around the world, uh, I spent some time in the Middle East. And Ab I remember Abu Dhabi specifically, which is a United Arab Emirates uh, city. And uh, they served Turkish coffee while they were over there. And so Turkish coffee, instead of regular coffee grounds, they grind up the coffee until it's almost like baby powder or talc. It's, it's super, super fine stuff. And they don't use a coffee filter. They just, they just boil the, uh, the coffee in the water. And then when they pour the coffee, you just make sure you don't drink the bottom part of your glass because it's going to be filled up with this just sludge of coffee grounds. Uh, but when they delivered it to me, it was a little bit bitter, super concentrated coffee, caffeine and all that. And I started drinking that at first just because I was being polite and that's what they offered me. And I, I 
you know, I, I'll certainly do what I can to fit in. But after a while, I developed a little bit of a taste for it. And, and now I love it. If I ever get a chance to go eat at a, a a Middle Eastern restaurant or somewhere, Lebanese restaurant, I'll always ask for Turkish coffee if they have it. Uh, and because of that, once I start drinking that, I kind of started cutting out the creams and the sugars. And it's just easier now. I'll just throw a pot in the morning. I don't have to worry about anything. Just pour it in a cup and I'm good to go. <laughs> right on. Yeah, it was it was funny, Jake. I don't know if you know, but when uh when we were in that Big Brother house, the the two big coffee drinkers I think uh, of our group was myself and Jackson Mickey, and he drank coffee as well. Uh, but I know David Alexander right before he he left the second time for the battle back that that I won, and unfortunately that meant he he left. Uh, but he decided to play a little prank on myself and, and Jackson, and he took all the coffee in the house. And we had big cans of regular coffee and decaffeinated coffee. And for a couple of days before the eviction uh, or before the, the eviction and the battle back, he had switched out the two cans. He took all the caffeinated coffee and put it in the decaf can and then put the decaf coffee in the regular can. And so uh, so Mickey and myself spent a couple of days drinking coffee, thinking it was going to keep us awake and get us all pumped up and all that. Yeah, there wasn't any caffeine in it at all. It was just a big, big prank uh, that David played on us. And he told me that after I got out of the house that he had done it. And uh, that I was like, man, that's perfect. I, it's a prank I should have thought of. I should have done it later in the season uh, when I needed to slow Bicky down a little bit. But yeah, he got us. And I, I still laugh about that, that we're sitting there drinking his coffee away. Because I remember Jackson at one point saying, you know, this coffee, I, I'm exhausted. I don't know. I'm going to drink another cup of coffee. Well, it's because neither one of us were getting any caffeine whatsoever. <laughs> I had fun playing pranks in the house. David played a few as well, but I had fun playing pranks also. Right on. What's your uh, uh, favorite uh, uh, prank prank that, that you played? I think the best one, uh, well, there, there, I'll, yeah, I'll give you two because I hate to separate between them. Uh, there's one that uh, Christy Murphy had, I think it was a soft drink, and she had maybe about a third to maybe a half of her little glass that was still filled with the soft drink, uh, and it was Coke. And so as it started melting, she had some ice in there, started melting, it started getting a little lighter colored and all of that. And, and I thought, surely she's going to come back and get this drink. She's not going to leave it there forever. So I went into the storage room and they had beef bouillon cubes. You know, those little things you get in the jar that look like a sugar cube, but they're beef bouillon. Mm. And I put one of those in her glass and just sat there and watched over the next 15, 20 minutes in this thing. By the time she finally came back to get it, it had completely dissolved. And so she grabs her glass and as she's starting to leave, she takes a drink out of what she thinks is a soft drink and gets that super salty, beefy flavor, a, a big old mouthful of it. She spits it out everywhere. She said, oh, my God, what is this? What is this? And of course, I'm falling on the floor laughing. So she knew I was responsible. Uh, so, yeah, I had a lot of fun. Uh, and then after I did that, everyone started trying to do it to each other. Those bu bouillon cubes suddenly disappeared because we're all trying to put it in each other's drinks and uh, trying to play pranks on each other with that. So that was a fun one. The other thing I did in our have-not room in our season, it looked like an old fishing camp. And I discovered... There were tackle boxes up in that room, and some of them had some actual fishing line in them, so the super thin, clear line. And I took about uh, 20 or 30 feet of that, and I went and grabbed all the dryer lint from, from our dryer and kind of squeezed it together so it made kind of a, an oval-looking little shape of gray, fuzzy-looking stuff. And I took the fishing line, and I wrapped it around it to try to hold it all together. And by the time I got done and tied off the string and all of that, the fishing line... It looked like a, a little bit of a a rat uh, oh. just made out of dryer lint. And so then I tied the uh, the the fishing line to a long length, length of fishing line and hid it up underneath the corner of the kitchen where the cabinets were and waited till people would come and start using the sink. And then I would just pull that line and then yell, rat! And they'd look down and they'd see this gray thing going by their feet. And some people didn't fall for it i know i tried it on kimmy and i say it didn't work on her but uh jackson mickey was there and i did it to him and someone yelled rat and next thing i know he is jumping up on the couch and he ended up hurting his foot in the process uh, as a result of it but uh 
He jumped up on the couch. And then I look over and Nick from my season has climbed up on top of our dining room table. He's like, he's like the, the cartoon of the, the elephant that's scared of the mouse or something, the way he's up there trying to get away from this rat. And it's just nothing but dryer lint that I pulled across the, uh, the floor. So yeah, I, uh, I had fun. Yeah. It was so boring in that house. There was nothing to do. So I would, I would do that when people weren't paying attention, I would get their shoes or sandals and fill them up with shaving cream and, and things like that. And, at the time, everyone laughed about it. Probably under their breath, they were probably saying, oh, God, this this Cliff guy is driving me bonkers. We need to get him out of here. He keeps doing all these stupid pranks to us. I don't think so. I think everyone enjoyed having a little bit of a laugh. We were all so stressed out. Anything that anyone could do just to break up the uh, the stress in there, uh, break up the monotony was, was welcome. So I certainly did my share with a few of those pranks. <laughs> right on. <laughs> About your uh, 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 comic, the uh, uh, Groundhog. Yeah. Um, I, I thought it was great, but uh, uh, uh um, um, jeez. Uh, um, did did did, did excuse me. Did did I'm 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 I I'm I'm I can't talk. I'm trying to ask if if that they, they um had any in 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 input from you or or not? Yeah, no, I get to say, uh, no, we didn't have a clue. They uh, and I guess I like the comic. I mean, it's cool. The idea that someone did a comic of you is always pretty cool, but. Uh, I really thought they were going to do something with regards to me winning the battle back or I don't know, I, I, or being the prankster or the cowboy or something. So they did the, uh, the groundhog over my name and all that, which it was fun. But yeah, no, we had, we had zero input into what went into that design. And I know the artists who did it, I actually got, I haven't met them. I've talked to them just uh, on Instagram, but uh, uh, we've exchanged a few messages and I told him, I said, yeah, I'm just so honored that you uh, you did. In fact, it's the same artist that did the uh, artwork for the Chinbot comic that was on the episode last night uh, that, that did my comics as well. And he has said before that the artists also don't have any input. Not really. He said that, I guess, uh, our house productions, the people who do Big Brother, basically approach the artists and, and say, we want to show this. Uh, so for me, they, we want to show Cliff as the groundhog and have a general idea of how they want it to be portrayed. And then he'll sketch it up and they'll say, yeah, do this, make it bigger, smaller, whatever. And then he'll finish it all up. But even the artists aren't given really any real liberty. They just do what they're asked to, how they're asked to draw it up and everything. Um, and so, yeah, we had we had no in input whatsoever. And it was funny because when we did BB Comics, there were only five of us. And I was really scared that I was going to go home that week. And in fact, if Nicole Nicole won the uh, that veto comp, if she hadn't won it, I think there's a pretty good chance I was going to be the one to go home. So I was really focused on playing and trying to win myself and do everything possible. And my comic was the very last one to the right. And I started off putting assembling the comics to the left and making sure they were all correct. And I realized about two thirds of the way through my particular round uh, that I hadn't even seen my comic yet. And I remember thinking, where's my comic? I, 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 I'm I, almost done and I haven't seen it. Well, then I realized the next time I got to where all the comics were, I realized that, oh, there I am in the very corner at the very end. Uh, so I didn't even really have a chance to, to spend much time to look at it or to appreciate it or anything because I was just so focused on trying to finish that uh, that competition up. Uh, but yeah, I remember once it was all over and the bell rang and they said, you're through Cliff, you can go indoors. And I stopped and I looked at it and it's like, all right, well, that's, that's all right. That's kind of cool. They got, they got my hat and everything else and you know, my name and also it was, it was fun seeing. And then they showed it again this season. Um, they, they had a blow up of my comic as part of the, uh, was it, it's not, well, I don't remember what the name of the comp was, but uh, it was one where it was myself and Pooch and a few other past uh, house guests. Uh, they had our comics there and they, they had mine as the guest all walked in. So it was fun to see me kind of virtually making an appearance on this season with, with my comics sitting there. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it was cool. And then when they got done, 
we had uh, the comics. One of them we sold at uh, Give Kids the World Hearts of Reality Charity. So I don't know who owns that one. Who, If someone's watching this and they own that version of it, let me know and I'll come over and sign it or something and uh, and say, hey, pose for picture or whatever. But uh, one of them got sold off to charity and then the other one I still have uh, here at the house and, and probably one of my most favored mementos from from the the uh, season I was on. They send you a box when you get done of kind of little trivial things, that things that, that mean something to you. So I got my comic. I got the hide and go veto that we'd used in that veto competition. I got my costume for BB Comics. Uh, I got the key that I originally found. So when they told me I was going to be on Big Brother, and so they sent a lot of that kind of stuff. But yeah, that comic and the uh, and the out the costume as well uh, are are both probably two of my favorite things that I got after the show. Right on. How about that that uh uh later hosen? <laughs> <laughs> I've got those somewhere. I th I'm pretty sure they sent those to me as well. Uh that was so funny, Jake, because that was for the leader hosen we wore were for was for the slip and slide. I don't remember if it was October fest or something. Uh, but that stuff that we slide on is like Crisco or lard or something. It's just greasy, white, creamy stuff. Uh, and I, I don't know if a lot of people realize when we competed in that, we weren't wearing tennis shoes. They made us put on little like ballet slipper kind of things that were super slippery on the bottom. So between that and the lard that they used, it was so hard going up and down that ramp. I, that was a tough competition. Uh, but when we got done, that Crisco was just everywhere on that leader hose. I was, it was probably more Lee, uh, Crisco than it was leader hose on by the time we got done. And so no one wanted to touch it. But eventually, I think uh, Holly and maybe Jessica, Cat uh, was already gone at that time. So I think maybe Holly and Jessica, they took everyone's leader hosen that had competed in that competition and they put, just kept soaking them in hot water and scrubbing them and doing everything they could. And by the time they spent a day or two working on it, they, they had it all cleaned up for all of us. It still smells. If I open up the baggie, it still smells like Crisco uh, from that leader hosen. But yeah, they got it all cleaned up for. So I, I've always been very appreciative. So uh, I've never really come up with an excuse to be wearing leader hosen here in Texas. Uh, we're through with Oktoberfest. I guess I've got to wait till next year. But uh, uh, yeah, I can't say I've really ever tried those on, except for that one time I wore them on, on the slip and slide. But uh, my, maybe I'll do one of my cliff notes one of these days wearing the leader hosen just to just to show off a little bit. <laughs> oh, you should. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe not. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> yeah. Some of the costumes I had is wearing in that uh, that house were were they were fun. You never knew what you were gonna get. They would say, "All right, house guests, uh, you've got costumes in the uh, storage room. So when you get a chance, go go ahead and go get dressed." So it's always excitement going in there and then seeing the costumes and trying to figure out what in the world kind of competition is this going to be. You know, we saw leader hose and it's like, oh my God, what are they going to have us doing now? We we weren't sure it was slip and slide or something else. So uh, you just never know until you actually got in the backyard uh, to, to see what it was all about. But a lot of the costumes, I'm trying to think, I think pretty much every single costume I wore during my season, they sent to me in that memento box. So I've, I've got most of them uh, and that's always fun. I know there were a few competitions like Otev we had like shorts we had to wear and some kind of little shirt. Uh, I don't remember the specifics. I just remember the pair of pants that they gave me was too big. And, and Nora, you get everything sized before you go in the house. You go to their wardrobe people who take measurements of everything. And so they know everything about your dimensions. And I guess maybe because I lost a little weight while I was in the house, suddenly the pants they gave me, the shorts, were real loose. And I thought, oh my gosh, I'm going to be out in the middle of this thing and uh, and my pants are going to fall off in the middle of, of national TV. And uh, so I ended up trying to uh, say, hey, guys, can we wait just a second? Do you have a belt or something I can put on? And eventually I went and grabbed one of my belts I had from a pair of pants and put that on, if I recall, and got it super tight. Uh, and, and then when I got outside and realized it was Otev and we were sliding back and forth and in the water, I was really glad I put that belt on because otherwise... I would have shown a whole lot more to the world than than I had planned on ahead of time. 
<laughs> so, uh, um, who, 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 uh, uh, this season, who, who's your uh, winner pick? Since only. You know, Jake, I said at the very beginning for a winner's pick, I picked Jag. I, there were two people I picked. I picked Jag and Felicia. I said I was picking Felicia because I'm always going to cheer for the older person in the house because I, I know what it's like to be in there. Now, I think she had a little easier because she wasn't the only older person in the house like I was. You know, I was in there. It was, it was just me and a bunch of 20-year-olds. Uh, she actually had uh, uh, Sari and and Bowie Jane and High Sam until he went home. So she had some other people that were close to her age, but certainly I was cheering for Felicia just because she was the oldest person in the house. But I had picked Jag as the winner primarily because in the beginning of the season in his interview he had said that he was just coming in to have fun he wanted to play the game but he also wanted to enjoy the experience and i thought all right someone who already knows that it's just a game and can separate the game from real life it makes me think that they're going to be a little more they're going to have a better ability to, to stay logical in the way they play the game and be able to be a little bit more flexible in the way they play based on what's happening so it just seemed to me like he had a a good head on his shoulders that was going to let him do well. Uh, and then I thought that was all gone once he got voted out 10 to nothing, but he got saved by Matt. So now he's still back in. And, uh, you know, I, of the people that are left, I, I guess I'm still going to say Jag. I mean, I, I, I would be fine to see him win it. I don't think he's, I don't think he's played a perfect game. Uh, and there, there's a few things. And I, I think as it turns out, especially here just lately, I feel like sometimes he and some of the others have been making things a little more personal than they should and, and complicating things a little bit more than they should. It, at this point in the game, it should be pretty straightforward. Just say, look, here's the way it is, and, and that's all it is. I, I know in my season when I got down to the final four, uh, Mickey pretty much just told me, said, hey, look, we're sending you out the door. It's nothing personal, but you're it's your time, and he and I talked about it and we stayed calm about it and we were still able to kind of communicate. We still shared meals together. No one hated each other. I was disappointed that I wasn't going to make it further, but I, I felt like we still respected each other uh, all the time and, and treated each other kindly. Uh, I'm not sure that's always been the case this season. And I, and I always, I, I hate to see it, but you get so stressed out in the house and you get so focused on what you have to do just to make it to the next step. And uh, I feel like that's some of what they're doing right now is just uh, so focused on a prize at the end that, that maybe not always being as nice as they need to be. And I just leave it at that. But yeah, I think Jag is probably still my winner's pick, both in terms of who I think's going to win and maybe who I'd like to see win. Now, having said that, I wouldn't mind seeing Felicia kind of upset the apple cart a little bit just to create a little more chaos in the house by, by maybe winning or, you know, whatever. I, I don't want to give spoilers or anything else. I, I think it's a tough, I think it's tough for her to survive. I'm not sure that she's going to do it. It'd be fun to see, but I, I think I'm going with Jag on this one. Cool. What about you? Have you had a favorite so far this season or, or now? Um, Jag for sure. Uh, 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 Felicia, but, well, um, I, I I liked High Song. I, I mean, I thought he, I wanted to see him go farther, even. But that always happens every season. Yeah, I think he just he just got a little power hungry there. I thought he was a great competitor. Uh, once you win a few competitions, especially this season, it seems like once you win a few, everyone just points their finger at you, and you become the target and all of that. And uh, uh, yeah, I've I, I hear you. It's it's hard to remember he was even in the house because it seems like so long ago when they uh when they sent him out the door. Yeah, but yeah, he was a good player while he's in there. He uh he got a little hoi hoitis, I think uh, a little bit power hungry here and there. He he certainly liked calling the shots, and sometimes you got to be careful about that. But he was, I, I gotta say, I haven't always. I mean, this has been an interesting season, and, and I. I I think I've enjoyed it, but sometimes it's been a little tough to watch at times. Uh, and I do think the fact that they've gotten out so many strong players earlier in the season makes it a little bit more boring towards the end. I don't think there's as much uh, power shifts and everything because they just keep getting rid of, of the folks and all that. So 
and I'm not going to say it's my A plus season or anything like that in terms of ratings, but I do think from a casting standpoint, they did a pretty good job of casting. They had a, a wide range of people in this house and everyone likes people. And there's other people that they don't like so much. You, you've got to have a villain or two every season. It seems like as well. Uh, but I feel like they got a good range of people uh, this season in terms of just variety and, and people that potentially could have made it exciting. Now, a few of them went home a little early, but it, it is what it is. Absolutely. So, um, what's your favorite season of Big Brother? Do you think? Ooh, uh, I'll start off by saying maybe season eight, Jake, because that's the first season I saw. Uh, I watched the very, very, very first season, season one, uh, and it just didn't really keep my interest. It was a little bit different format back then. The, the viewers voted out people, and I thought it was a little slow, but I've always been a huge fan of reality TV, but. Uh, I watched season eight uh, when it came out and that had evil Dick in there and Eric Stein. And I just thought it was a, a fun season to watch. So it's always the one I remember very fondly. Uh, I kind of like the season right before mine season 20 with Faute and uh, mm -hmm. some of the people that were in there. And I, I've, I'm friends with a lot of them now, Josh and Caitlin and Ty, uh, Tyler and a few other folks. So Casey and all, uh, I th and JC, I, I thought they had a pretty good cast that was interesting and not always the best gameplay, but they were a lot of fun to watch as well. Uh, a lot of the other seasons just almost start blending together uh, after a while. So mm -hmm. it, sometimes it's not as much favorite seasons as just favorite people from different seasons. Uh, you know, I, I love uh, Donnie, uh, Donnie from season 16, uh, Johnny Mac, uh, one of my favorites. I, I liked him. Uh, Vanessa, was she in 17, I think? Sometimes I, I can't remember who was in what, but I certainly have a few favorites from, from each season uh, that I recall fondly as well. But yeah, I'll, I'll say maybe say eight is still my favorite just because it was old school. In a lot of ways, they got, away, they got away with things during that season that they would never allow during our season. There, if, if I'd done some of the stuff Evil Dick did in there, or if anyone in my house had done that, they would have been booted out so quick, but it was just a different time. Uh, what was that 13, 12, 13 years ago? It was just a little, little different situation. Oh, yeah. That was a fun one to watch. Yes, you watch. <laughs> and I've tried to go back and watch some of those, but I'm kind of spoiled. I like the high definition cameras and all of that. You go watch the old ones with the standard def and everything just looks so old and so blurry and, and all of that, that, uh, it, sometimes it's and there's not nearly as many twists in there so it's a little bit slower pace sometimes uh so i i haven't ever really been because before i went in the house i told myself all right i need to watch some more seasons and kind of get up to speed on some of the old stuff and so i went through a lot of it but i, I never really would start at the beginning go all the way through the season i would just go pull up specific episodes and watch and see how people did things and things like that okay cool Um, the, the, I, 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 I have a, a hypothetical, uh, um, if, uh, if, um, season 10 w was, uh, 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 available to watch and, and, and your cast had, had, had watched that, do you think that they would have voted you camp director instead of Mickey? That's the season with Jerry, right? Yes. Yeah, and, and you know what? I thought about that. When they asked for volunteers for camp director, I immediately thought of Jerry and that he was in charge in, in the very first week of his season. And that's one of the main reasons that I volunteered to be camp director because I was really hoping, because I was the very first person to volunteer, and I was really hoping that if I volunteered, no one else would want to go up against me. It would be easy to say, yeah, let the old guy have it. Yeah, Just like last time. Uh, and so when I volunteered and then suddenly David volunteered and then Jessica volunteered and then Jackson, Nikki volunteered. And I was like, oh, guys, y'all aren't supposed to do this. You're supposed to just give it to me. And, and, and it didn't work out like that. Now, the difference was we actually had to campaign a little bit and talk to people. They gave us a chance to, uh, to try to encourage people to vote for you and, and this and that. Uh, whereas Jerry, if I recall, 
before they even went in the house, I think maybe they said, y'all need to just, while you're just looking at each other, pick someone to go in. So there wasn't any conversation. And so once one person pointed at Jerry, it just kind of made it easy. So our, our, mine was a little bit harder situation. And when I was in there, it quickly became obvious that it was either going to be Jessica or Jackson, that everyone is kind of re uh, revolving around. So yeah, it didn't work out, but it's funny you mentioned that, Jake, because that was the very first thing that went through my mind was Jerry and how he took control in the very first week because he was the old guy. And I thought, I'll, I'll just do the same thing. This is perfect. Well, not, not so much. It didn't quite work out for me. <laughs> um, once again, thank you so much. This is this is awesome. Yeah, my pleasure, Jake. As as much as you and I have chatted on uh, uh on my show and all of that, I'm happy to do it. And props to you for uh, uh for for doing this as well. And uh, congratulations to you, my friend. Thank you. So now a lot of fun. I always you know me. I love to talk, and I love to talk Big Brother, and and now you know I love to talk horror movies as well. So uh, uh, this has been fun. I, I thank you for for having me on. It's been a lot of fun. Mm. One quick thing. I I I just be curious. Um, do you have a a, a favorite? Uh, uh, not even, I, I use that word a lot. I guess. For that of a better, but um, do you have a preferred alcoholic beverage if you if you drink? Oh, yeah, I drink. I don't drink massive amounts, but there's nothing wrong with like a Lone Star beer, which is a beer here in Texas, a Shiner beer, Lone Star beer. If I want to get a little fancier, I like to drink an old fashioned, uh, a little little bourbon in there. I, nothing wrong with that as well. So, those are kind of my my go to drinks. Uh, but but I'm a little bit alcohol the same way I am with wine. I know what I don't like, but beyond that, there's a lot of stuff that that I'm perfectly uh, uh, fine with. But yeah, I like the little some of the microbreweries and things that are down here in Texas, and and then for the fancier stuff, I'll always go for a little bourbon or whiskey. Uh, that, that's kind of my go-to. Uh, so yeah, that that's what I love. Awesome. But I'm down here in Texas, so there's nothing wrong with the margarita as long as well. I I don't discriminate. Get, I don't discriminate against my uh, alcoholic beverages. <laughs> <laughs> you you are, are are talking my language now, uh, uh, margaritas. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Nothing wrong with that. I've I've put down my share of uh of margaritas. <laughs> nothing nothing better than a, a margarita and a big old plate of nachos in front of you. Mm, yes. I agree. Well, I I I don't I I do not want want to to take take up too. Jeez, I, I don't want to take up a lot of your time. So it's been a lot of fun. Thank you, thank you, Jake. I appreciate it, and uh, uh, best wishes and, and good luck uh, uh, doing this. And it, it's always a lot of fun. And and thank you for for letting me be part of it. Thank you for for, for being a part of it, and um, have a good night and. Enjoy your weekend. Will do. Cheers, my friends. Jake, you have a great one. You too. <laughs> Bye. Bye.